Welcome back. You're tuned into the Editor's Roundtable. Now, for this week itself, we had a lot of cement stocks, whether it was Ramco, Ultratech, JK Cement, or even Dalmia Bharat. All of them hit fresh, or, or, uh, fresh 52 week highs. And the cement space on the whole was seeing renewed buying interest. So we said, let's check out and what are the top factors that contributed to this renewed interest in the cement stocks. Well, first up, remember, we're getting into an election year. And the street was factoring in a demand growth of close to around 8 to around 10 percent approximately. But it seems the start of uh, this fiscal has been a little bit better. The push is expected in the second half, both from the housing as well as from the infra space. But now the street says maybe we could be surprised with low teen to mid teen growth. So that's for the industry on the whole. Well, the second factor is, uh, you know, consolidation has been talked about for the last 12 to around 18 months or so. But you've seen very limited action on ground. However, now there are hopes yet again that there could be some possible consolidation in the sector. Remember, you have a big uh, you know, acquisition that was taking place out there. And the group was a question mark with regard to the debt on the books. That seems to have so got sorted out. And that's why, in fact, the street again is hoping that maybe there'll be a few large players looking at buying some of these smaller companies. JK Cement, they announced a very, very small acquisition of Toshali uh, Cements. The deal was done at around $30 uh, per ton. And it marks the entry into East India. So a small deal. But he had a 150, 200 crore deal getting done, the street like that. The other one that the street is looking at is Sanghi Industries. Remember, we are aware that the debt in the books is high, the utilization levels are low. So a deal seems to be on the cards. And there were reports that indicated there were various suitors for this particular asset. On a valuation parameter, well, the stock has already been attractive. But can we see some consolidation? The street thinks, seems to think yes. Maybe in the coming quarters, will you have some part of that? And the third factor, which is a positive for the entire industry, is the cooling off of pet coke as well as coal prices. To give you a number, pet coke prices have cooled down to around $110 uh, per ton. That's the lowest that we've seen in the last couple of years, you know, since uh, January 2021. So that's uh, good news out there. Even coal prices have seen a sharp correction. In fact, if you look at it from the end of 2022, those prices are nearly half of what it was. So coal and pet coke prices have cooled up. That's what will give a bit of a fillip in terms of, uh, you know, uh, margins from year on. And a couple of brokerages, whether it's Jefferies, they are building a 200 to around 220 rupees per ton increase in the EBITDA per ton. Even Axis Capital, they are saying that the EBITDA per ton in this year will go up by close to around 25%. Finally, the big points that you need to focus on, pricing hasn't improved that much, but it seems lower input cost and higher volumes. That's what will offset any kind of weakness in terms of pricing. So cement sector, can it surprise this year? That's the big question. And earnings uh, could be upgraded if that's the case. All right. Thanks a lot for that. And Elish, you want to comment on this, on the cement sector? Of course, the expectation is that, uh, you know, because there's so much pickup in terms of infrastructure, real estate, property prices are going up. So cement automatically would pick up. But your thoughts? No, absolutely. I second that view. I mean, there's, there's uh, no, no denying that. Uh, the volume environment is fairly benign, uh, especially with the kind of infrastructure pickup and the expected pickup, further pickup in construction activity. Uh, but really the big kicker is going to be the margin expansion. Yeah. And I think with crude where it is, with coking coal prices where they are, margins are set to improve. That's essentially really the big alpha for the cement sector. The, the point is you need to have a view on how long will these uh, expanded margins sustain. If they sustain for extended period of time, the upside could be great. But otherwise for me, it's actually one more commodity. Uh, that you're still in a way uh, dependent on where crude oil prices are, where coking coal prices are. Uh, it's going to be still a function of that. You know, the one big risk which people have not yet, uh, you know, factored in or, or talking about much is the election early next year. We've seen in the past, you know, just six months or one year before the elections, some sectors tend to underperform and some sectors do well. Uh, any thoughts on which are the sectors that you would like to bet on just one year before the elections? So, well, historically, a year before the elections, um, the consumer appliances, consumer yeah. durables as a space... The, rural, to, the whole rural the, the whole rural. Yeah. Um, I think this year what maybe the markets will be additionally focused on is mm -hmm. the monsoon and the El, El Nino. If that plays out relatively well in terms of we have a normal monsoon or not too bad a monsoon uh, and with relatively stronger agricultural prices and on top of that uh, a big election period coming in, then this as a sector consumer appliances can do well. Uh, they've had challenges of demand for the last two years or so. Yeah. And there's been challenges of margins for the last one year. They have not been able to pass on the higher input prices because of a sober demand environment. If that changes, if demand gets back and they're able to kind of pass on some of those input prices, consumer appliances as a space can be in for a huge positive surprise. Okay. Any final thoughts then uh, before we let you go? I mean, we're running out of time, but overall for the market, anything that you want to leave us with? 
No, I think uh, it, it looks pretty good. Uh, I just hope that the, mom that the earnings momentum that we have seen for the last couple of quarters continues for this financial year, uh, especially with the backdrop of lower commodity prices, lower input prices, and hopefully lower interest rates. I think if the, all of this continues, uh, I think finally I'm of the school of thought, it's earnings, earnings, and earnings. So if earnings materialize, I think it should be fine. The only joker in the pack, according to me, is the US Fed. Yeah. Uh, I just hope, keep fingers crossed, uh, that they don't kind of tend to take a very different or a divergent view, which brings back a risk of kind of an environment. But otherwise, I think it still seems to be good times. Just follow the RBI, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I think uh, they have been very courageous and very divergent. I think and that's that's great. Okay. Well, on that optimistic note, thanks a lot, Nilesh, for joining in. And thanks to all our viewers. It's a wrap on this edition of Editor's Roundtable. Have a great weekend.